activists seem to have all day to whine on the internet about how unfair life is to them. Now, I'm not an MRA, but I happen to know quite a lot of MRAs in my life. And as far as I know, they don't complain about how life is unfair to MRAs. I mean, they do complain about the lack of funding, the lack of any kind of coherent structure within the movement because they're so fragmented, stuff like that. Oh, and let's not forget censorship from feminists, but that's besides the point. They don't really complain about how life is unfair for them. They seem to do what men do and just get on with it. But what they do complain about are the issues that face men today. But if that is to you, a feminist, about how complaining about how life is unfair, then I guess I've already lost you. If sexism exists, why isn't their life better? Wait, are you implying through this rhetorical question that sexism benefits men? And if it exists, why aren't their lives better? Well, sexism happens to both men and women. The things that these people talk about, these men's issues, are often a result of sexism. So men's feelings being taboo in society. The bias against men, not only in civil court, so be it divorce or child custody, but also when it comes to prison sentences. I mean, you think it's bad enough that black men get higher sentences than white men? When it comes to them as men and their female counterparts, men get overwhelmingly more prison time than women, and this prison time is bigger than the racial gap. So yeah, it doesn't benefit men. I guess that's what you're saying. I'm having a brain fart now, guys, so bear with me. Why do women always win custody battles? And why isn't assault taken seriously if a woman does it to a man? Why do women get to marry rich men, divorce them, and take them to their cleaners? Ah, so now I get it. It wasn't a rhetorical question. I press the trigger too soon. Forgive me people, I, I seem to have been nitpicking. I know that's a bad thing and it's what anti-feminists do a lot, but please, I just saw it and assumed it was a rhetorical question. Now, to answer your point, I think this is a straw man here. MRAs and egalitarians and anti-feminists don't claim that sexism doesn't exist. And yes, you are right. The things that you mentioned, that I mentioned, do happen. And MRAs haven't claimed that that isn't because of sexism. In fact, they say it is because of sexism. I don't know where you've got this from, probably we hunted the mammoth or something like that, but again, it would be illogical and retarded to assume that it isn't sexism. And why do women get to go through life just by sitting there and looking pretty? Well, I wouldn't say you will. Most importantly, why can't any of these MRAs get a damn girlfriend? Wait, hang on, what's that got to do with anything? That seems like you're conflating the MRAs with MGTOW, and even then, MGTOWs can have girlfriends. I think you'll find that quite a few MRAs are happily married. Tom Golden, I think he's an MRA, I know he's a male psychologist. Uh, uh, Paul Elam is married, uh, Dean Esme, even though he doesn't use the label anymore, when he was an MRA, he, I think he is married. I know that Karen Strawn and Alison Tiemann are married. I actually met Alison Tiemann and her husband. So I know those are women, but I have mentioned male people who are married. How is this a point? Is it just ponage? I hope it's just ponage. I mean, I don't mind. Why are women so difficult and bitchy? Why are the nice guys always stuck in the friend zone? Oh, well, women are bitchy because they have emotions like everybody else. That's not anything to do with sexism. I don't know about you. I know the, these are probably rhetorical questions, but then again, you've been totally stone-faced serious throughout this video, so I don't know. And as for the nice guys, well, they always win out in the end. The, the bad guys never settle down and get the girl. It's always the nice guys. It's true. Just ask Unknown Archive. He was a bad guy. These kind of arguments actually remind me of something I noticed a Facebook friend mention on her timeline recently. Oh, I see you again conflating uh, arguments with what MRA say, because apart from the legal things that you mentioned, things like nice guys and not getting girlfriends and things like that, they're not MRA talking points. Those tend to be more MGTOW and, more usually, pick-up artist uh, lines. They tend to be the things that they say. And like most feminists, you conflate all these groups as MRAs for some weird reason. It can possibly be to poison the well and to essentially demonise this group as just a bunch of men who are complaining about things that aren't really relevant to society. But you did get, pay at least a little bit of lip service with some of the legal things. 
but even then you seem to be dismissing them because of these other things. When you want to criticise a movement, it would be best to know what their arguments are and not conflate them with other groups. Just saying. She's a white girl and she argued that racism doesn't exist. Well of course she's white! It's only white people who claim that racism doesn't exist, right? It's not like the other radical leftist coloured people will go on about how white people can't be victims of racism, that they themselves cannot be racist, even though they just said a racist thing that white people can't actually be the victims of racism and are the only people who are racist. So yeah, I like how she's ra she's the the white girl who says that racism doesn't exist doesn't exist when I think we all know people that this is probably not what she said. Let's be honest here. She said, "If racism really exists, I fail to see how I benefited from it in any way." I think I know what the question actually was. I believe she, this person was talking about systemic racism, and she's posing the question: Does systemic racism exist, and how do I? a white girl living in the 21st century benefit from this? It's a simple question, you don't need to be dishonestly rephrase it as a if racism uh, exists then how do I benefit from it? And even then that would be a kind of rhetorical question in and of itself like how does she benefit from, from racism? How can you prove that she does? And so far I haven't seen any reasonable argument that suggests that white people do benefit from racism. I've seen plenty of evidence to suggest that we POCs do benefit somewhat from a kind of racism. Probably the actual term is positive discrimination and that is more along the lines of the affirmative action type things that we have given to us by the government made up of mostly white people. So yeah, I mean she's posing an interesting point even though you clearly uh, rephrasing it in a way to make it look like she says that racism doesn't exist. Just like how you say that because the MRAs are men, they're saying that sexism doesn't exist. Logically, none of this makes any sense. Now, gaze at the utter ridiculousness of this statement on Twitter. I can't believe she actually used this and didn't realise that non this doesn't make sense. Dear white people, no one is saying your life can't be hard if you're white, but it's not hard because you're white. Firstly, how does this person know what life is like as a white person? Are they white? And if so, how can they speak on behalf of all white people if they are and say that your life isn't hard because you're white? What if you're a very poor white person living in a trailer or in an apartment or in some kind of slum? These people exist and have always existed and probably always will unless we deal with world poverty. I, I don't understand. I just like the inherent classism here and the racism. Your life can't be hard because you're white, even though it clearly can be. There are plenty of instances of famous people starting off very poor who were white and had it hard. And indeed there are stories of white people living in areas that are minority white where their life was made hell because they were white. Hagbar Selene is a prime example of that. He received racism from the majority black neighbourhood, they may have been Hispanic as well because he was white. And I myself as a mixed race person have had to deal with racism from black people, Asian people and white people. In fact my most recent dealing, dealings with racism was with, an Hispa with two Hispanics online, uh, Joe uh, Wally Bumblebee's husband and the Bronx blogger who tried to say that I was lying about my race. So yeah. Anyway let's carry on, I could go on. She was mentioning the time that she was applying to colleges and how she would have loved to click anything but white on that application box. Just like I'm sure that many MRAs hate that their life is so challenging as a straight white male, am I right? Life can be hard for anybody, regardless of race or gender, my love. It can be hard for anybody. Usually it's harder for those who are poor or not rich. And for those people, they have to deal with a lot of problems in life. And that can be anybody. They can be black, white, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I just like how you completely dismiss the issues of men. But you phrase it like straight white men. Even though MRAs are dealing with all men's issues. And that white girl, I don't blame her. Because you seem to be omitting some information. Because as we've seen on university campuses, as we've seen in university policy, they would rather 
due to quotas and to basically fulfill this diversity bullshit that they have adhered to. Even though maybe this white person is better qualified to be a student at Harvard or Yale or Oxford or Cambridge, but they can't have them because of a quota or diversity. So yeah, racism. And also, let's not forget that it's quite clear that being white isn't really all that on campus, is it? Especially when we have radical leftist groups like feminism, we have Antifa, we've got social justice warriors who demonize white people on a regular basis, usually straight white men, but increasingly white gay men and also straight white women because they are anti-white because they see white people as the problem. No wonder she felt that way, even though as a white woman, she's further up the progressive stack than a white man would be. So, yeah, I don't blame her. Of course, I didn't say anything to her because I tend to leave people alone on their Facebook pages and just let them post whatever kind of stupid crap that they want without calling them out publicly on it. That's fine by me. I don't care. You do you. I tend to do the same thing sometimes, unless it's really egregious. I have a lot of friends who post pictures of steaks and burgers, and as a vegetarian who knows how these animals suffer, of course it bothers me, but I just say nothing because if I say something, then I look like the I like how she senses it. I wonder what she said. Did she say cunt? Idiot? A bastard? Who knows? I wish I knew, but she's right. She would be a bit of a cunt or whatever she said if she did that. And I just don't think it's good to call people out on their own social media pages, like it's their page and they can post whatever they want. And it just makes them really defensive, so whatever. You know, if you weren't so dismissive of people's issues and weren't such a sexist and a racist, I would like you to be my friend, because you seem like the feminist I would like to hang out with. Because you'd rather us all just get along and not bother with that shit socially and like save the debate for another time. You, you don't you don't seem all that bad. But anyways, what I wanted to say to her, and this applies to MREs as well, is that racism or anyism isn't here to benefit you. Well, firstly, your friend asked, how does racism benefit her? She's not saying it should benefit her. She's not saying she wants it to. And MREs are also the same. They don't want it to benefit anybody. They want it to be eradicated so that we live in an equal society, right? Isn't that what feminists want, apparently? The way that our culture eats meat and abuses animals doesn't benefit humans. Yes, it does, actually. It keeps us clothed, keeps us fed, it gives us fuel, it gives us all sorts of resources that we require. But what's your solution to that? Because if we were to become vegans and vegetarians, we'd have a whole host of billions of animals that were not meant to survive in the wild. They're domesticated. They rely on humans to survive. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna let them out into the wild and cause ecological havoc and may potentially go extinct because they don't know how to run away from predators or things like that? They may have some instincts, but they don't really know how to survive in the wild. Do we cull them? Do we kill them? Peter already kills thousands of animals a year because they just simply can't afford to look after some of them. So, what's your solution? I understand that, especially cows, do impact on us with some negative things. So, for example, global warming and red meat isn't good if you have too much of it. But you can say that about any kind of food if you have too much of it. So, again, like, what's your point here? I know your point isn't about environmentalism, but, like, how is this in any way similar to racism and sexism? Like, how? What can you possibly bring to the table that has some kind of equivalency? Just like sexism doesn't benefit men. That's a false equivalency. In fact, it's not even a false equivalency. It's just flat out wrong. The way we keep animals does benefit us. Like I said before, keeps us clothed, keeps us fed, gives us resources. But sexism doesn't benefit men. You're right. It doesn't benefit women either. Or at least it shouldn't. But it is, isn't it? Because we have, unfortunately, bias in the courts. Not only civil but we also have it in the criminal courts. So, again, what is your solution to this? Why are you saying that MRAs and, and to a lesser extent, white people don't believe racism and sexism exists when they clearly do, that's why they complain about this shit? And why then do you then dismiss their points? I, I don't get your point. Let me just say this one more time loud and clear. 
Sexism is not here to benefit you. Oh, what do you mean by that? You keep saying this. How does it benefit MRAs? I don't think it does at all. Sexism is one of the things that motivates a lot of the stupid stuff that is said about mostly male MRAs. And to a lesser extent, the female ones. But we'll get to that. Because firstly, as you may know, and you've said it here before, why is it that these MRAs can't get any girlfriends? Why is it that they're always just a bunch of basement-dwelling sexists? That is born from sexism, isn't it? And people, both male and female, say that to these men. That is being sexist to them. And then we have people like Karen Strong and Alison Tiemann, the rest of the Honey Badgers, and loads of other female MRAs who are told, oh, you're not women. You're clearly either just transgender or you're a man beneath a sock, a sock account. You are simply pretending to be a woman. How is that not sexist? So it's pretty clear that sexism doesn't help MRAs. It doesn't benefit them. In fact, it impacts them quite negatively now, doesn't it? Regardless of gender. With unjust systems, everyone loses. Everyone loses because society as a whole is degraded. I agree, but you are doing nothing to solve this issue. Feminism isn't doing anything to solve men's issues at all. What they talk about being men's issues are not men's issues. They usually talk about emotional stuff, which is really more of a social thing and not really a political thing that MRAs are really interested in because that stuff is really something that either can't be solved because of biology or changes over time due to a variety of factors. But that's besides the point. You are not solving anything by dismissing them and trying to say that sexism doesn't benefit them and getting in their way. You should be working with them. You know there are issues that affect men, but you seem to be far too interested in your own ideology and attacking other people who you perceive as the enemy here and attacking them for really bizarre reasons. How does this help anybody? It's difficult to build genuine self-worth when society judges us based on superficial things that have nothing to do with our accomplishments. Again, I agree with you, but the only people I see doing this are feminists. Feminists are the ones that judge men on everything to do with their gender. Why do you think toxic masculinity exists as a concept? I think the patriarchy exists as a concept. Why is, so far, whenever there's a massive, big shooting and it's committed by a man, they blame his masculinity, they blame his gender, when it's pretty obvious that it has nothing really to do with his gender at all. And they blame all men. They blame all masculinity. How is that? not do, taking something superficial and attacking it, like you said. That is degrading society, isn't it? And they do the same to women in a different way. They infantilise women. They say that women can't do this, can't do that because of sexism, yet at the same time we'll try and say, oh, we can do anything, we're strong independent women that don't need no man. And let's not also forget that they also say that, oh, without men we cannot get rid of the patriarchy and solve world equality bullshit. When, again, they're trying to say that women can do it on their own, but they're trying to make out that women are weaklings, especially when it comes to drunk sex. But saying They literally say this. This is what they say. When a woman drinks alcohol, she cannot consent to sex, but a man can, even if he's blackout drunk, it seems, because they can never give us a straight answer about how much alcohol it takes. So, again, who is the one judging people based on superficial... Uh, characteristics, I wonder. In our sexist society, feminine qualities are given lower value. That is completely wrong. Have you not heard of the empathy gap, the gender empathy gap? Do you know what that is? I'll give you a very simplified way of explaining it, but basically, human society, all of us, all humans, have this empathy gap. So, we feel far more empathy for women than we do for men. Now, why is that? Well, if you follow the teachings of science or evolution and evolutionary psychology, women are the most, at least in hunter-gatherer societies, less so now, but the, there's still hangovers from our evolution, women are the most important people. Why? Because they are the people that continue the species. Yes, men have the sperm and then inseminate, but it's the women who carry the babies, give birth to the babies, and humans take a long time to gestate. So women are much more important than the men in those circumstances. You only need one man to keep that tribe going because then there'll be baby boys growing up who will then grow up and have sex with 
uh, other females and the tribe will go on. Men are disposable. That's why men went to hunt and maybe the older men and the boys would stay back and look after the women who were socialising and picking berries or something because women are too risky to send out on hunting expeditions because they could die and if they all die your tribe is dead. That is the empathy gap and that is why men's issues and feelings are not taken so seriously. They are taboo because we have this empathy gap. Who knows in hundreds of thousands of years of evolution this might go away but we still have this inherent thing. So women's femininity, women's issues are taken very seriously. People much prefer that especially these days. Why is it that women get away with crimes on a more regular basis than men. How come they could be let off scot-free from crimes? It happened in Oxford the, the other week. A girl stabbed and abused her boyfriend in an argument and she got off because she's a promising surgeon. And Brock Turner didn't even get away with his crime. He just got a light punishment. So don't you dare ever, I mean not you, but feminists in general ever bring him up ever again when those things happen. Women get less prison time. In fact, there's even a move to try and get women never going to prison at all because sexism. Women are far more likely to be empathised and sympathised to in the courts. They are far more likely to get sympathy from that, even when they're accomplices in murders, like with the Ian Brady case, the Mars murder. M but never mind, you won't understand that. You clearly think that women get it bad, they're not taken seriously when they are. Stop crying. Stop with the tears. Don't cry. Pick yourself up. Stop with the emotion. Don't be a pussy. Don't let nobody disrespect you. Be cool and be kind of a dick. Always keep your mind Nobody likes a tattletale. Bros come before hoes. Don't let your woman run your you life. You bitch. What a fag. Get laid. Do something. Be a man. Be a man. Grow some balls. Why is it that she's brought this up about men after she's just said something about women? And with all those things, that's because of the empathy gap. You've literally explained my point, love. You've literally just defeated your own argument with this point. Now, I don't, the mask you live in, to be fair, is a very feminist thing. The Only Badgers have done a thing on that. So, to be honest, let's just power through this uh, stuff and see what she has to say about it. I don't know if this is her point. She's just brought it up and therefore this is her point or it's more evidence. I really don't know. But let's just see what happened. From middle school, I had four really close friends. Once I kind of went into high school, I struggle finding people I can talk to because I feel like I'm not supposed to get help. Why do you think that, girl? Why do you think that? You've obviously used this for a reason. Are you are you trying to say that both men and women aren't taken seriously, even though it's quite clear that girls get all the help they need? They have all the domestic violence shelters you could possibly imagine, rape hotlines. In fact, a lot of psychology is heavily geared towards them. For example, when we try to get people to open up and express their feelings, what people are taught is how to get women to. So when you try to do that to men, they don't open up because psychologically that's not what they're like because we're actually different, right? And let's not forget that the way we teach about rape is that it's penetration only, even though it isn't. Forced envelopment is actually a thing, but by law, it isn't. And feminists are constantly trying to stop that from becoming law so that women can't be accused of raping men. Then you say feminine qualities aren't taken seriously. How come they're being considered such angels? Why do you see on every single advert that has to do with something domestic that the men are just fat slobs? You can't do anything against the women who are the domestic angels who fix every problem. <laughs> ah, whatever. Our kids get up every morning. They have to prepare their mask for how they're going to walk to school. A lot of our students don't know how to take the mask off. Yeah, because you see, your feelings are taboo, made by all of society. Your purpose as a man, due to our evolutionary development, is to protect and to provide. And nobody's going to protect to provide for you. You have to do it for yourself. Do you not see the point here? The empathy gap, gender roles. We have a situation now where men and women are having a crisis of identity. On the one hand, women's roles could never be more fluid. They can be the provider, they can be the protector if they want to be, or they don't have to be either. Men are still to this day trapped in the provider-protector role, when originally the idea of emancipating women is meant to emancipate everybody. Well, the problem is, as Warren Farrell discovered, 
If you only emancipate women, you don't emancipate men because they haven't been emancipated. Their issues haven't been solved. Do you not see the reasons why this is happening? Those people in these documentaries that you are showing don't get that. Boys and young men learn early on that being a so-called real man means you have to take on this tough guys. In other words, you have to show the world only certain parts of yourself that the dominant culture has defined as manly. No, the reason why men have to put on the tough guys is because if they don't, and they open up with their feelings, people will ostracize them because their feelings aren't taken as seriously because they can't be afforded that luxury that women get because their job is to protect and provide because of evolution. If I have to repeat myself, I bloody damn will. It really has nothing to do with being a real man. Yes, a real man is somebody who is able to raise themselves above their problems and issues, personally. I mean, there's not much they can do with societal issues, really, but the tough guys thing is really just a coping mechanism. It's got nothing to do with being a real man. We don't have much of a choice but to do that because we won't be taken seriously. We'll be ostracized. Shows is that an awful lot of boys and men are inflicting an incredible level of pain and suffering both on themselves and on others. And women do the exact same thing. What's your point? Calling attention to the way that masculinity is connected to these problems is not anti-male. It's just being honest about what's going on in boys and men's lives. It is when you blame the entire problem on men and masculinity. Like, that's the reason why this happens. When you gender these issues, because women abuse people, women abuse themselves, women will commit suicide or murder. Maybe men on record do it more, but then again, women don't seem to get convicted as much as men. So, I wonder if we had an equilibrium in the court system, would we see the number of women convicted of murder rise? I wonder. Murder, abuse, all these things are not gendered issues. Abuse especially is generational, intergenerational. If your parents do it, you are most likely going to do it. What you described is anti-male, inherently anti-male, and I can't believe she actually thinks this is some kind of men's rights activism. This is your typical of bullshit that feminists will spew about men all the time. And while women have been at the forefront of change and trying to talk about these issues in the culture, it's not just women who will benefit if men's lives are transformed. And then he claims it isn't anti-male while he's raising women up to be this big thing where they're breaking new ground. I mean, this is a very old documentary. And even then, they haven't done anything. And does he mean feminism? We know they love to conflate women in feminism. Well, look what's happened. Nothing's changed, has it? This type of stuff solves none of our issues. And how can he then almost victim blame men as if, oh, they're not helping, they're making it worse, fuck off. In fact, while men commit a shameful level of violence against women in our society, statistically speaking, the major victims of men's violence are other males. And women commit a shameful amount of violence against men, boys and girls. In fact, lesbian relationships are notoriously bad when it comes to abuse. And as I talked, to a bisexual friend of mine, Jordan at the screen, he says some of them don't even know it's abuse. They're just fighting each other. <laughs> They're the worst. Statistically, lesbian relationships are the worst when it comes to abuse. Women kill more kids than men do because they're the ones that are with them all the time and for whatever reason, maybe it's psychological issues or accidental, who knows, these women kill kids and they also kill their partners at about equal the rate of men. Yes. Men on statistics, yes, statistically, men are more violent, but I wonder how that would look if we actually tried on convicted women as much as we did men. You would see a lot more of an equilibrium considering when you look at domestic violence statistics, if you look at psychological studies, women are just as violent as men. Men may be more aggressive, but women are also just as violent. It's just interesting, isn't it? Again, he's blaming these men's masculinity. He's blaming men for these issues. It is anti-male. He's using the statistics in a dishonest way to paint the picture that it's men who are the issue, when we know it isn't. By always being told that they aren't allowed to have emotions because that's girly and anything girly is bad, men are more likely to suffer from mental health issues in silence. That is a correlation that does not equal causation. And by the way, women don't like it when they're referred to as men or manly. That's a boy thing to do. That's a manly thing to do. You're so bullish or dykish. That's something more masculine. Women don't like that either. Do they get psychological issues from that? 
Just saying. They're more likely to lash out in violent acts of aggression, and they're more likely to commit suicide. Now, why do those men commit mass murder? It's because they're not getting the resources required to help them? Is it because that their issues aren't taken seriously? And as for suicide, is it not the same thing? Their issues aren't taken seriously. They can't get the help that they actually need. We're incapable of giving them the help they need. Just wondering, maybe it's that and nothing to do with saying that's girly. Just wondering. A society that devalues women is harmful to everybody. How? Why? How? How does that make any sense? How is a society that's harmful to women harmful to everybody? That just means that it's harmful to women. Men are not going to be affected by that. Oh, but of course, you know, if we emancipate women, the men will be automatically emancipated. Just like the sand feminists, when they say if we emancipate Muslim women, we'll emancipate the men. I mean, they can keep their bullshit barbarian religion from the Iron Age, and let's not forget that we'll be sorting out all the women's issues, but none of the men's issues, so the women will basically have a nice fluid system in which to go between different roles and do this and do that while men will be stuck in the same old shit they've been stuck in for the last 1400 years. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need, isn't it? Ignore the men's issues, solve the female issues and automatically, like magic, like Merlin and his wand, everything will be fixed. I love your logic, girl, your logic well. Sexism hurts men too. And this also affects male relationships with women. I can't believe you are lecturing MRAs and egalitarians on this. Of course they know sexism affects men too, because that's why they're complaining, that's why they're MRAs, you moron, you idiot. Do you not see that all you're doing is arguing against a straw man, a straw MRA, a person who you know doesn't exist or you think exists because you've been told this person exists, that thinks sexism doesn't exist yet they're a men's rights activist. <laughs> You're arguing against a straw man. This is just made of straw. Where are the crows? Look at John Gomeshi, Mike Cernovich, Dush V, sorry, Rush V. John Gomeshi is an innocent man who was the victim of a false rape accusation, a smear campaign. Mike Cernovich himself was the victim of an attempted doxing that really was trying to remove him. Hell, he could even have been killed. He, he reckoned that, that he was really to try and kill him, although the doxing was the thing that was admitted. I don't know about the potential murder, I don't think there's anything in that, but he himself has been the victim of smearing campaigns, and he's also a happily married man in an interracial relationship, it's there on Twitter, so again, like, why are you bringing him up? And yeah, Roosh is a douche, so he's not an MRA, neither is Jan Gameshi, neither is Mike Cernovich. What is your point here? Can't you actually bring up an MRA or bring up something that's relevant to the conversation here? And anyone who has made a career out of being a chauvinist. John Kimeshi wasn't a chauvinist. How is being interested in being a dominant in BDSM a chauvinist? That just means he's a dominant, sexually dominant. He can't help being the way that he is. And how did he make a career out of it? The man was as progressive as they come until very recently. What? That is a lie. Mike Sunovich as well is not a chauvinist. Why would he be happily married and have kids? Bruce V is the only person you have an argument for. But again, what has this got to do with men's rights activists? As far as I know, I believe that John and Bruce still live with their mamas. And none of these men have had successful marriages. What did I say about sexism influencing that type of comment? Nobody looks at MRAs and thinks, oh wow, their relationship is so gold. None of them are fucking MRAs! John Gimeshi was a TV presenter who got accused, falsely, of rape. And Rush V is a pickup artist. He hates MRAs. He's written negatively about them. He's talked to Karen Strong, but he's not an MRA. He thinks it's weak. A sign of weakness. <laughs> How can you not know this? Oh wait, you just read the feminist propaganda in the mainstream media and outlets like We Hunted the Mammoth, Everyday Feminism, uh, Rest in Pieces by the way, and Jezebel. I reckon that's what you read and you've come up with this bullshit that you all spew, people like you. Also, it shows how little you actually know about non-MRAs and MRAs. Like I said before, even though Cernovich isn't an MRA, and it's interesting that you didn't say his name because he is happily married, Paul Elam is happily married, and a few other people from A Voice of Men are happily married, Karen Strawn and Alison Tiemann are happily married. These people have wonderful relationships. Also, interestingly enough, John Kimeshi, as far as I know, he had relationships with disgusting, horrible women, but he was never married. 
and that says more about the women than it does about him. And John Gimeshi, he's a pickup artist. Why would he be married? Although he has since talked about wanting to marry because he's getting older and he wants to settle down, maybe have children because he can't keep it up. He's getting old. But none of those were married. So, so it shows how little you actually know about what you're talking about. You have no clue. And this is because they have trouble forming these relationships. Oh, I didn't know you were such an expert on male psychology and how men can get relationships and how these particular individuals can get stable relationships. Yeah, it's not like John Kameshi thought he was in stable relationships that ended amicably or if they didn't, at least what's done was done. You know, maybe the blame didn't lie solely on him. You know what I mean? by blaming all men and masculinity. They struggle to relate to women. They see dating as a battleground where only one person can win by being dominant, making other person submit or whatever. Those are not MRA talking points. Those are pickup artist talking points, you dumb bitch. It just isn't how it works. Oh yeah, please do explain to me how relationships work, miss. I know everything. I just want MRAs to know that you're not making your life any better and you're hurting yourself more than you're hurting anyone else. Well, firstly, you ought to actually talk to actual MRAs like Warren Farrell, like Aaron Pizzi, Bane66AU, uh, Jordan at the Screen, Paul Elam, the Honey Badgers, all those people, and not talk to straw men who people who are feminists have claimed are MRAs, and this is what their talking points are, or pick up artists and MGTOWs. Now, there is overlap between MGTOWs and MRAs, but on the whole, most MGTOWs and MRAs are neither a pickup artists. At least talk to actual MRAs, rather than bring up talking points that aren't MRA talking points and are instead other things in the manosphere. Maybe then we'll get somewhere. Maybe then your lecturing will be responded to with the actual intellectual drubbing it needs, because I'm not an MRA and I'm not the best when it comes to this shit, but I thought I would, you know, insert myself because I like talking about men's issues so yeah next time try having the balls to actually find the real MRA and lecture them I dare you as a society we just need to stop judging people based on superficial things and treat people like human beings well first try practicing what you preach bitch <laughs> the cheek the cheek of this woman like this is what MRAs and egalitarians actually fight for. This is the issues that they're trying to address, but apparently they don't. Apparently these straw MRAs are more interested in stuff like friend zones and shit, even though that's pickup artist bullshit. Ugh. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I could do the shtick, but you won't know the shtick. Links are all in the down below in the stuff. Like it, share it, blah, 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 whatever. I'm pissed off. And now I've got to go stream in a couple of hours and that's going to make me even more pissed off. So anyway, guys, you don't piss me off. So I'll see you later.